Hello class. In this lesson, we'll be learning about the side splitter theorem and the dilation theorem. So what is a side splitter? It's a segment that, like the name, name says, it splits the sides, but it splits them proportional. So for example, in this diagram, CD, segment CD is a side splitter, and we can verify that with the information that's given. So if we substitute into this proportion, we will get two equivalent ratios. So they give us this, 12 over 8, that should be the same as 9 over 6. And they'll simplify to 3 halves, or 1.5. So we have a side splitter. Now why is that useful? Well, when we have a side splitter, then the side splitter is parallel to the third side. And the converse of that statement also holds. This is an if and only if statement. Think about how you could write this down using our math notation and the given diagram, and then I'll show you my solution. So to describe this theorem, you could have written this down. We have this proportion holds. That says you have a side splitter. If and only if those two are parallel. Those two segments are parallel to each other. So what is this proportion saying if we think about dilation? Well, this proportion is really talking about a scale factor. These would both be the scale factors, and our center would be that point O. So dilation will take A onto A prime and B onto B prime. And what, does, what do these statements imply about segment AB? That implies that it is a side splitter. Right? If we divide OB prime by OB, we get R. And the same holds over here. We divide OA prime by OA, we get R. So those are both equal, so we have a side splitter. Let's see if we can verify this by using uh, measurements. So remember, our tools are only so accurate. In this case, we can only measure to the, uh, to the millimeter. And so we might have to do a little bit of rounding to get, a, uh, to get our answer. That's OK. So it looks like, in this case, OA prime is 9 centimeters, and OA is 5 centimeters. OB prime is 7.2 centimeters, I'm sorry, 7.7 .7 centimeters, and OB is 4.2 centimeters. And if we look at both of those ratios, 9 over 5 is 1.8, and 7.6 over 4.2 is just about 1.8. We have to round that one. Like I said, your, your tools are only so accurate. If we had a, a you know, perfect ruler that was very precise, we could uh, measure that. But we only have down to the millimeters here. So, but it is, uh, it's a side splitter. It's accurate to our, uh, to our measurements. Is this proportion also true? How do we know? Well, what's the difference? These are the reciprocals. We know that as long as we don't have zero anywhere in our equation that you can take the reciprocal. And that's true. Right? We're talking about lengths here, so none of them are zero. And is this proportion true? So this proportion is saying that if you take AA prime and divide it by OA, that will be equal to BB prime divided by OB. Is that true? That turns out, turns out it is. And that's sometimes a more useful proportion to use, or a more straightforward one to use. So let's see if we can justify that. So we're going to apply segment addition here first. We're going to split up uh, OA prime and OB prime. And now let's plug into our ratios that we have from the side splitter. So we know that's true. And now when we substitute, we get this equation. See if you can finish this and get the proportion that we're looking for. And then I'll show you my solution. So all you got to do here is divide each term here by OA, on the right-hand side, each term by OB. And you know that OA and OB are not 0. So when you divide these, you get 1. You subtract 1 from both sides, we get the proportion we were looking for. So we can also use this one to show if we have a side splitter. In this example, we want to show if segment BD is parallel to segment AE. 
To do that, let's use the side splitter theorem. If we have the sides being cut proportionally, then by side splitter theorem, those will be parallel to each other. So first we got to set up a proportion. So we want to know, is a b over bc equal to ed over dc? We don't know if that's true, so I put a little question mark there for now. Now if we substitute, we can solve this and see if it's true. Or simplify it, I should say. So 3 over 6, that's 1 half. And 4 over 8 is 1 half. You can also put it in terms of decimals. So yes, the sides are split proportionally, so those are parallel uh, segments. On the right-hand side, let's look here. So same idea. So that proportion, we don't know if it's true or not. And we substitute. And are these two fractions equal? Well, 1 over 2, that doesn't simplify. And this, uh, I multiply top and bottom by 10, right? That's 12 over 30, and that simplifies to 2 fifths. Those aren't equal. In terms of decimals, you get 0.5 is not equal to 0.4. So no, those sides are not split proportionally by the side splitter theorem. I'm sorry, they're, they're not split proportionally, so they're not, the sides aren't parallel by the side splitter theorem. And now we can use it to find the length. We have parallel segments here, so we know that we can use this proportion uh, to solve the problem. So that we substitute, apply the cross product, divide by 24, and you get 15. So now we have the dilation theorem. And here's the, the definition. Let's break down what that means. So the segment formed by two points that are being dilated, if we if we take that the length of that new segment and divide it by the length of the original segment formed by those two points P and Q, that'll be the same as the scale factor. So note in this statement, in this equation, we're not talking about the center directly at all. We're just talking about P, Q, and their corresponding images. And also, if your scale factor is not one, and if you have uh, the center and those two points make a triangle, then after you do your dilation, you will have parallel uh, lines. PQ will be parallel to P prime, Q prime. So let's look at an image of an example. So here we have uh, P and Q, and uh, we have triangle OPQ. So we'll perform a dilation. This third side is proportional uh, with the original one. If we divide P prime Q prime by P Q, we get three halves, which is the same as our scale factor. And we also get those parallel sides. Now, why is this true? Well, this looks similar to side splitter, so we're going to complete a proof soon involving the side splitter theorem. So what happens if the scale factor is 1? Well, if it's 1, you have the identity transformation. So uh, you actually have a congruence in this case. And what if your center and those two points are collinear? What's going to happen to your figure? Well, if you do the dilation, uh, let's see. If you dilate point Q, that's going to be somewhere on this line. If you dilate point P, that's going to be somewhere on the line. So those will all be collinear. And your center stays invariant. So let's prove uh, part of this part of this dilation theorem. We're going to prove uh, just the case when you have a reduction. And the case when you have an enlargement is very similar. So they give us, the, uh, we have this diagram we start with, and we're saying that we have a dilation. That's given to us. So why can we say the second statement? OP prime over OP equals OQ prime over OQ, which is equal to R, the scale factor. That's just our definition of a dilation. We know that those corresponding lengths are proportional. And so why can we say that line PQ is parallel to line P prime Q prime? Well, in our second statement here, we're saying that the sides are cut proportionally. So by side splitter theorem, you know that those are parallel lines. So, so far we proved one part of the dilation theorem. We proved that uh, the segment here is parallel to the third side. Now we want to show that it's proportional. We want to show that 
if we divide uh, p prime q prime by pq, we get the same uh, number as a scale factor. So to do that, we're going to perform another dilation. We're going to use center p, and we're going to use a different scale factor. We're going to use scale factor p p prime over p o. And this is going to be useful because when we connect p prime and r, we get this figure here, this quadrilateral. And R, R is what you get when you do the dilation of, of Q using center P. And so this is just definition of dilation so far. So Y is se uh, segment P prime R parallel to segment OQ, OQ prime, I'm sorry. Those are parallel because the side splitter theorem, right? We said previously, uh, it's a very similar argu argument to before. We have a dilation, so we have uh, the sides cut proportionally. And why do we have a parallelogram? Well, the opposite sides are, are parallel, so we have, a, uh, by definition, a parallelogram. So we want to get uh, PQ involved in this and P prime, Q prime involved. So let's see what we can get there. Well, we know that our Q equals P prime, Q prime. Why is that true? You know, opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal in measure, equal in length. And our Q divided by PQ, so our Q divided by PQ, that's going to be the same as P, P prime O, sorry, P prime O divided by PO. How do we know that? That's from our side splitter theorem. Those sides are parallel, so we know that we have a side splitter. So they're cut proportionally. And so now, why is this statement true? That substitution. If we go back to line two, we know that uh, P prime O over P O is uh, equal to R. Right, we just flipped the order here. That's okay, it's a segment. Or segment length. And so now, we apply cross products. And we substitute from line 6. On line 6, it said that we have the parallelogram. I'm sorry, let's say from line 7. It's a little typo. All right, so line 7 uh, says these are equal, so we're just plugging in for our Q. That's what we want to show. We want to show that uh, P prime Q prime is equal to R times PQ. So how can we apply that? Let's zoom out here. Okay, we want to figure out, do we have a scale drawing here? So we know of a scale drawing if the corresponding lengths are all proportional. And how can we check that? Well, if you divide DE and DG, and then divide EF and GH, you end up getting a proportion that's not true. When you divide DE and DG, you get about 0.46. But when you divide EF and GH, you get about 0.5. So it looks like it's a scale, a scale drawing, but it's actually not. And let's see how we can apply that dilation theorem to find these missing variables. So to find M, we can look at the big triangle. We know that this side is 5, and this whole side is 3 plus 6 plus 3, that's 12. And the dilation theorem, these are parallel, that says that this is a side splitter here. So we know that if we divide M and 5, that must be the same as... 6 plus 3, 9, and 12. So let's highlight that. We're looking at, oops, looking at this piece and this piece. We're comparing that with this whole side and 5. And so now we can solve that, do cross products, divide by 12, and m is 3.75 find A, it's very similar. 
very similar. So we'll stick with, uh, let's see, we'll stick with looking at the large triangle here. However, now our length over here from the center to the, the point where this segment hits the uh, this side of the triangle is just 3. So now we're looking at these two. Looking at those pieces and this one. And now we do cross products and divide by 12 and you get 1.25. In this lesson, we learned about the side splitter theorem and the dilation theorem. Thanks for watching this video.